All right, Coach, uh, opening thoughts on this week. You added a couple of games at Southern Utah and then the big announcement uh, with the WAC. Oh, it's a wonderful week for the WAC, uh, for University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, um, to have six Texas teams, um, you know, four new ones coming, and along with Tarleton and us. Um, you know, it's just – it's awesome. It really gives our, our league a foot – you know, a, a face now, and, you know, we'll have a Southwest division and a West division. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're not only, uh, you know, for women's basketball, we're adding, you know, Stephen F. Austin's, you know, their power, their RPIs around 60, 70. You had Abilene Christian, who's been at the NCAA tournament the last couple of years. I mean, we, we're we adding some really good schools, Lamar, Sam Houston, and, uh, you know, also the team we're going to play this weekend, Southern Utah. So um, just a, a great time to be in the Valley. It's a great time to be at UTRGV. Um, and the future for this league is now stable. And, uh, and I think that's the most important part, adding, bringing football back to the WAC is exciting. And, um, uh, you know, I think it, uh, it really will solidify this conference as uh, not only a, a great basketball conference, but also, uh, you know, the opportunity for these teams to play football and represent the WAC. So we're excited. As far as the game goes this weekend, uh, we're just so glad to be playing. Our last game was December 19th. Um, came back from the break, had a couple practices, and then next thing you know, um, you know, Chicago State canceled. Uh, we've lost seven games now due to COVID with other teams. or And then this last week, uh, you know, we had the COVID as well. So it's been an emotional and, and uh, you know, mental drain for the players not to be able to play, but they've handled it. Uh, we've had uh, two practices now since we got off quarantine and uh, we're a little out of shape, obviously, from not practicing for the last 11 days. Um, but uh, I think our kids are hungry and they're ready to play. Questions for coach? Good afternoon, coach. I'll, I'll take the lead off on this one. Um, with these, with this extended break, uh, I'm pretty sure um, from a recovery standpoint, it it must be good to have a, a lot of freshness, but also a concerning factor would be the, the game rust. How do you see your team right now at this point uh, coming back from such a long layoff? Well, Ray, I think uh, we did a nice job to finish out the first semester, you know, two game winning streak. Um you know, play some good basketball. We're starting to starting to improve. We're getting a few other players healthy. So it's, uh, you know, it's time to go play. But as far as us getting the rust off, I think, you know, once you get on that floor, you know, it might take a few possessions. But I think uh, these kids are 18, 22-year-olds. Um, they're hungry. They want to play. And I think the rust will come off pretty quick, hopefully. Fingers crossed. You got more questions, Ray? Or you want me to go? Cool, cool. Uh, so kind of staying on that Southern uh, Southern Utah point, um, it was announced yesterday that Southern Utah is going to be joining the WAC. You know, uh, how exciting is it that you kind of get to see a Southern Utah preview before you guys actually uh, kind of come together in the conference in 2022? Well, it's, it's kind of weird how it worked out. We were supposed to play Dixie State um, this weekend. Uh, they opted out of the season. And we got an email from uh, Southern Utah saying, hey, we lost our game. Would you guys be willing to play? And uh, we said, sure. And, um, you know, we, we set the game up. They're going to return it here next year. And then the following year, they'll join the league. So at least we'll get to each see the other uh, team's place and where they, you know, where they, uh, the, the cities we're going to be going to for the next 20 years or whatever. So um, I think it's good for both teams. Uh, Southern Utah has got a beautiful arena. Um, just a, you know, a big time facility. So we're excited about that. And then, you know, they're just, uh, you know, a big rock throw away from Dixie State. So, um, you know, that's two, two games that you'll have on your road swing that, you know, you, you don't have to fly in between. So that's going to be really nice for the future as well. And kind of one of the unfortunate themes of this season has been with at least the squad has been the injuries um, that you guys have battled all season and, you know, it, over the break, I mean, it's been an extended break over a month long. And last time we were talking you were going to get some key players back, 
um, but you were still going to be missing a couple. What's kind of the standing with the with the roster as you head into the Southern Utah game? Well, we're a little banged up. We've got about nine that we can play right now. Um, we had a uh, uh, Jordan Lewis, junior for us, uh, who's been playing pretty good basketball for us, one of our better athletes. She's uh, got a little bit of an eye problem. We're hoping to get her back for this weekend. Uh, Val Tapia is still a couple weeks away. Um, Sarah Bashirs has looked really good. We're hoping to, to get her some big time action this weekend. And that'll be huge. She's a great scorer. Um, her basketball IQ is very, very high. And, uh, you know, she'll start for us this weekend, her, her first game back. And uh, we lost Eva Beloshevitz, uh, who's been starting for us every game. Um, she'll be back uh, next week uh, due to the COVID um, protocols. She's going to have a few more days to, to recover, and then she'll be back. Uh, and then we're hoping to get Boujou a couple minutes this weekend as well, which would be nice. Uh, it's been a long time coming for Boo, and uh, that 6'5 presence is, is something we're excited about. And, um, you know, hopefully we can get her just a few minutes, um, get, get her feet wet before New Mexico State. And one of the things that I find pretty interesting about this matchup against Southern Utah is that you're going to be playing them on Sunday, um, yes, Sunday and Monday. Um, and it'll be the first time this season you guys play a double header. And the reason I find it interesting is because in conference season, that's how it's going to be as well. How is your, your team going to be prepared for, you know, those back-to-back -back games that can at times, especially for a team that's had a month long layoff can be yeah. pretty tough. It is going to be tough. But um, again, I go back to the point that, you know, these kids are so tired of practicing. I mean, 30 days without playing a game, uh, they're going to be hungry to play, but uh it is going to prepare us for the next uh, seven weeks. You know, we got New Mexico State coming in here next weekend. Um, so this will be our first back to back um, situation. So we're excited about it. Um, you know, in conference play, you got to play three games in three days. So um, when you get to the tournament in Vegas, so if you want to win it. So we're, this is going to be good for us to, to get our feet wet, play two games in a row, see how we can manage the minutes and, uh, you know, hopefully compete very well and then get us ready for New Mexico State. And now moving towards the, the announcement of the, the WAG expansion, uh, one of the key points that was made yesterday with head coach Dart Matlock from baseball was that with the expansion, it kind of provides more, more branding for the conference, especially within the state of Texas, since four Texas institutions will be joining. You know, how do you think that would help you in the recruiting, in the recruiting trail? Oh, I think it's big time. I mean, a lot of times if you're up in North Texas recruiting and you say, have you heard of UTRGV and uh, we're so far down here that, you know, a lot of people that haven't heard of us. Well, now we've got Tarleton State up there. We've got, you know, the teams in Houston area and the Sam and East Texas with uh, Stephen F. Austin. I think it's going to help our recruiting big time. And, um, you know, not only um, with the high schools in those areas, but uh, or in those regions, but you think about it, um, look at the media markets in those areas. And uh, that's huge. Um, you know, you got Houston papers covering those schools. You got, you know, Dallas the schools or Dallas newspapers and radio and all them covering Tarleton and uh, Stephen F. So um, I think it's going to help not only recruiting, but it's going to help grow our brand, like you said. And we've got to get this a household name right here. Uh, UTRGV, the RGV is who we play for. And we've got to we've got to make this a household name. And with this conference and the expansion, I think we're on the right track to, to continue to grow our, our brand and, and rally the valley. And the other thing that was made a like a key point yesterday with the announcement as well was the travel, the the reduced travel. Like you said, right now the real, I mean, UTRGV is at the very bottom of Texas. You guys have to travel all the way to Seattle U, but in the future, you know, this team is just going to be traveling mostly in state for the conference, and you know, every once in a while to to the Western Division. Uh, how is that going to help you guys in the future with recovery and just travel? Oh, I think it's huge. Uh, you know, you can you can get to all these places in, you know, five, six hours at the most. So we're uh, excited about that. But, you know, you think about it, we're going to play these schools twice and then all the Texas schools twice home and home. We're only going to have to go to Seattle every other year. Um, you know, we're only going to have to go to Utah Valley every other year and uh, Dixie and, you know, all those schools, New Mexico State. So it makes it nice to, to be able to, to play in state, and continue to grow our brand like we talked about. And then uh, still get to go to those beautiful cities, but it'll be a every other year basis.
And my final question, how excited are you just to be back, you know, after the, the month long layoff? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it's uh, this, we've said it a million times this year is like no other. And it certainly has been um, for basketball junkies it, as uh, we all are, um, you know, playing the games, what is uh, what you practice for and prepare for and um, just to get a chance to get back on the floor. We're just so excited and our players are, so excited. You guys, I don't know if you guys know this, we've used our locker room one day this year. That's when we had our one home game against Prairie View A&M. We're not allowed in the locker room except on game days. So um, just to get an opposing team's locker, get our team together, this will be our first real road test um, where you get in a plane and you fly. And and that's, that's important to do that before we get into conference so our new players can experience how we travel, how we, how we uh, conduct ourselves on the road in the airport um, while we're uh, – traveling on a bus from the airport to the hotel, all those little things that I think a lot of people take for granted that, I mean, so we got a couple of players never been on a plane before. Uh, so we, we got to get the doggy bags out and get them ready to go. So but yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a good experience for us. Coach, I've got another one for you. Um, long layoff and you're going to be flying into the altitude of Salt Lake city and then uh, busing uh, down to uh, to do to Cedar City, Utah. Um, how much how much rotational work have you guys been working on, just to try to have those fresh legs? Uh, being that this is going to be a back to back night uh, type of environment, where yes, they they may have seen it in other circumstances uh, via high school or junior college, but now it's division one basketball and you're traveling into the altitude. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a different experience for us for sure. But, but Ray, we are actually flying into Vegas. So hopefully that, they don't want to stay there all night, but uh, just joking. Uh, but we are flying into Vegas. Then we'll bus over to, uh, uh, over to C uh, Cedar city, like you said, and then, uh, uh, play these two games but yeah I, I don't know how we'll respond but I can tell you this in practice I told them uh, today we've got nine of us that can play possibly ten you're all going to play and you're all going to play a lot so our rotations of in practice have been good we feel like we're ten deep so you know now we got to go make plays but it'll be two minutes in two minutes out two minutes in two minutes out I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that for sure We've been playing tomorrow and today about 40 minutes a game. That's just not going to happen. So we've got to kind of divide them up and get get a minute or two rest here and there. And maybe at the end of the quarters, give them a little breather and get that long TV timeout and then get back out there. I like the old adage in hockey, you, you know, get, get your, get, get your, your shift. 120, get your shift in, get out, you know, quick rotations yep. and, uh, and, and no silly, uh, no silly mistakes. Yeah, we'll be climbing over the chairs instead of the boards, but we'll get to our water as soon as we can. Get that shift change. <laughs>